Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you how I built this bed for my daughter. This is a solid wood bed, it's made from cherry, the spinach with rubio, morocco and chocolate. And that was one of my criteria for making this bed. I did not want to paint it and I did not want it to use pocket holes. Now, I know this video is a little bit long and if you want to see the short version of this video, then skip to this timeline or here, here, somewhere here. Uh, because the first 12 minutes or so of my video, it's my thought process, how I came up with the design and so on, and milling the lumber. So if you do not want to watch the whole thing, just skip to that timeline and then you will see the shorter version of this video. Uh, all in all, this bed was so much fun to make and it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And if I can do it, you can do it too. I've never built a bed before. This was my first time. It was a lot of firsts with this build. And, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hey you guys, today we are finally starting working on my daughter's bed. I have never built a bed before, so this is going to be quite an adventure. And uh, for the wood, I decided to go with cherry. Not sure if that was a good or not choice, we'll find out by the end of it. And uh, I purchased the wood a few weeks ago and the wood has been acclimating in my shop. I had a dehumidifier running here the whole time trying to, you know, dry it up and make sure everything is good and stable. And um, the boards, I have them all there. Um, I do not have a plan. Uh, I have no idea how I'm going to build this bed. All I know is that I do not want to paint it. I do not want to use pocket holes. And that's pretty much my criteria. It's going to have a headboard. It's going to have a small footboard. The bed is going to be a twin size and I'm thinking for the design, um, like I said, I don't really have a plan. I'm going to make it up as I go. And um, what I'm thinking for the headboard and the footboard too, kind of like a shaker style inspired where you have the, the two uh, legs and then you have a frame. And inside that frame, I am going to put slots that are going to have a rabbit and they kind of overlap each other to just, you know, fit inside there. So that's kind of my plan. I do not have measurements yet. I don't know what I'm doing, but what I need to do first is haul all this wood outside on my driveway and then take um, chalk. Thank you so much to the subscriber that recommended that I use chalk to mark my wood. I'll be using some chalk and I am going to mark every piece of wood what part of the bed it's going to become. So first things first, gotta haul out the wood, mark it up. So I measure my material, I kind of made a plan on which part, which board is going to become which part of the bed. And I decided for the legs, um, I know this is going to be an unpopular decision, but I decided I'm going to use an eight quarter uh, plank for the legs. And I know I could glue some panels together and make like a three by three or a four by four. And that's what probably most people will do. But I am going to go with the eight quarters and I'm going to leave my legs a uh, two inch by either three and a half or four inches. And that is not a very common leg shape or size, but I promise you it should work because I have a bed. I'll have to take a few clips when I go inside, but my bed that I own uh, and it's very sturdy and very comfortable. It's a bed made here locally in Maine by Thomas Moser's. And that's a really high-end um, furniture maker. And uh, the legs are two by six. So <laughs> that's what he is using. That's for a king size bed and the bed could not be sturdier. I'm going to show you some clips on how the bed is looking. Now here is the bed I was telling you about. This is a Thomas Moser bed. And let's look at the legs. Let me see, I can hold my camera with one hand, move the sheets out of the way. So this is what he uses for his legs. As you can see, it's tapered at the bottom and it's about, it's less than three inches at the top. You can see it better from this view. 
so maybe like two and a half inches by one and maybe three quarters but this is the way he used his legs and i think it's a fantastic bed it looks really nice it is super super sturdy so and this is a king size bed so if he uses this size legs for this bed i think i would be more than okay with my size for just a single and that was kind of my inspiration for the legs on this one i really i feel like four by four it would be way too heavy for a single bed and then uh three by three it also is gonna look a little bit chunky so i'm gonna go with what i have also i was trying to avoid gluing up panels for the legs because i want to give myself the option of being able to stain my wood and in my opinion when you glue panels together sometimes it shows up when you're staining than the glue lines so i, I would rather avoid that and just uh, keep with what i have it might look funny it might look just fine so that's what i'm gonna do for the legs so i'm gonna bring in my eight quarter material and i'm going to cut it into manageable size which is the length of my legs and i think i decided i'm going to go with 48 inches for it and that should be from the ground to the head of the um, headboard and then um I'm going to mill the legs and that's what we're starting with, one thing at a time. Now, luckily for me, um, this bend saw, it's really easy to change the blade. So that was not a problem. And now I'm about to rip these boards in half. And because I'm a one person operation here, I put two roller stands, one on that side and one on this side to support my board. It is a big, heavy board and I want to be able to fit it to the machine safely. I do not want it to fall off or, you know, bad things to happen. So I'm going to use these rollers and split my boards into halves. Now, when it comes to jointing, I'm going to approach the same kind of technique. I have a roller in front of my jointer. I have these rails and then I have rail and another roller stand on this side. That way the board has support all around it. That makes it a little bit easier for me.
Alright you guys, I finally have a plan. I figured it all out last night. I was here playing around with this, finished milling my lumber, and here is what we're going to do. This is my footboard, and I have two legs for the footboard. Uh, I'm gonna give you the quick measurements. This is three and a half wide by one and seven eighths thick. And the length of my footboard is 35 inches. So I have two identical legs, one, two. Those are for the footboard. And then I marked it eight inches from the bottom. So I have eight inches from the bottom. I made a mark with the pencil line and that's where my foot is going to be. And then this frame is going to attach at the line going upwards. The frame or the panel are going to sit. And then this eight inch foot, I will add a taper on the bottom to make it look, look a little bit lighter. Then these frames, these are five quarter material. I cut them down to two and a quarter inch by one and one eighth inch. And they are 36 inches long. How did I come up with 36 inches long? Well, a mattress, a twin mattress is 38 inches long. So mine is 36 the frame. And that is because I will be gaining an inch and a half from each leg when I will be putting the uh, brackets. Because I'm going to use, let me find them over here. I'm going to use these brackets to attach the rails. And the way this one will go, the wide one will be attached to the rail. This, this one will be attached to the leg. I'm going to put it kind of like in the center and then the rail is going to go like this. So you see I will be gaining about an inch and a half on each side from each leg. So one and a half with one and a half that's three inches. The 36 gives me 39. That is one inch uh, wider than my mattress. So I should have a little bit of wiggle room. I don't feel I need more than one inch because it's just the box spring is going to sit in between the rails and stuff. So you don't need to stick your hand in there to put bed sheets and stuff. So one inch I think is going to be great. Now, as you just saw in that clip, I did run a dado onto my frame and that is so I can just drop floating panels that are going to be a half inch thick. So on my uh, table saw, I put a data stack, a half inch data stack. So you made exactly one, uh, one half inch data. Uh, I wished I had six quarter material for this. Unfortunately, I only had the five quarter. And because of that, I offset my data. I did not put it straight in the middle. Let me just give you a little bit closer view. So you see, I have some material on this side, but a lot more material on this side. And the reason I did that is because when you're sitting in bed, let's say you're reading and you're leaning against the headboard, most of the pressure is going to be outwards from the bed towards the outside of the frame. So I'm going to put the thicker part facing outwards. That way, if you lean on it, it's not going to flex, it's not going to break. It has a little bit more power. And then the thinner one is just going to be a little reveal, you know, in the front. That was my thought of that. The depth of my data is three quarter inch. So now we will have a frame like this. I have one on the bottom, two on the sides, and there will be another one on the top to cap it after I, after I put the floating uh, panels. The next thing I need to do now is with my data stack still on place, I'm going to do something like I did here. Here is what I tested. So what I did is by using a um, miter gauge, I trimmed, let me show you closer so you can see. So with the data stack, I trim a three quarter inch deep, uh, this portion and this portion, 
and you see that gave us this tenon and this tenon is going to fit into our frame just like this let me show you so it's going to fit just like this and this is how our frame is going to go together like that so I did that one just for testing but I'm gonna go and do it for real now and the, only the rails that goes up will need those tenons because it will fit into the bottom and then I'll have the one on the top capping it so the two rails that are on the sides that is going to get this tenon so to do that I will have to nibble away at the one side do all the panels and then do the other side like adjust the blade until it just eats all that material and if my dado was <laughs> If my tenon was right in the middle, that would make it easier because you only have to set the blade and the fence once and go with it. But because mine is offset, I have to do one side first. I'll start with the skinnier part and then I will adjust the blade and do the thicker part. I hope that makes sense. Um, you'll see it as I do it. So that's what I'm going to do next. I am going to make these tenons. I'm going to make, first I'll make two tenons, one on this side, one on this side. And then I have to cut this, um, this rails to size because remember I told you they will start from the pencil line. The frame will start, but I wanted to add an inch and um, an inch and a half. I wanted to add an inch and a half shorter of the leg itself. That way the two legs that are sticking on the side, just as a design element, are going to be an inch and a half taller. So I want my whole frame with the panels to stop short one and a half inch. So I am going to do the two tenons on the bottom, cut these two boards to size and then do the tenons on the top. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm talking a lot. I know exactly what I need to do in my head. I just, I'm not sure how to explain it. All right, you guys, I have my frame. This is the frame where the floating panels are going to fit into. And then the legs, I marked eight inches down. That's where the foot is going to be. And we will put a taper in here. And then I marked one and a half inch on the top. So you see my frame, it will stop one and a half inches short of the top. And of course, I'll have two legs, the frame, and here is what I'm going to do next. Next, I am going to, well, first of all, I am going to sand all the pieces. And as you can see, the tenons fit nicely into the groove. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sand all the pieces from 80 grid uh, all the way to 220. Going to make it nice and smooth. And then what I will do is I will take these three pieces, not the top part of my frame, but just these three, and I will glue them in place like this. I will clamp them, and I'll have to make sure they stay exactly at 90 degrees. I'll put some 90 degrees clamp in here to make sure it stays straight. And uh, so sand it first, glue it, let it dry, and then uh, later today, when it's all dry, I will come and put the panels in. I'll have to mill my one by material. I'll mill it at half inch thickness. And then with the dado stack, I will add a rabbit alternating. So I'll put the rabbit on this side and then I'll put the rabbit on this side. So when they fall within each other onto this uh, frame, they will stack nicely. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, in the meantime, I have to figure out a color for my daughter, what color we will stain it because she hates cherry look and um, she really wanted walnut. But we'll see what I can convince her to choose something that hopefully doesn't look too gothic or, you know, because she will have it black if she could. But anyway, sanding, gluing this frame and I'll see you later.
So I centered my frame all the way to 220 and I glued in these three pieces. So the two sides and the bottom one, they are glued in right here in these corners. This part over here, the top rail, it's not uh, glued. I just put it in place just to make sure my frame stays square. Also, it helps with clamping. So now I could put these long clamps. By the way, I will put links in the description below to all these clamps if you're interested, if you like any of them. These two, I think, are Rockler clamps. I got them on Amazon. These are some Betsy clamps. These things are some really cheap clamps that I really like for small projects. And this um, square, they are from Woodpeckers. Now, many companies make these squares. Um, I just happen to have these ones from Woodpeckers. And the reason I place this in the corners is just to make sure that my frame stays square. I've had many problems in the past with my things not staying square. So I got done using this and that helps a lot. Now I'll be, put this, I'll be putting this aside and I will send the legs and also I will make the frame that will go into the headboard. That one is going to be a little bit bigger, so different dimensions. But the same principles, I'll give you the dimensions when, you know, it's all done. So right now I'm just gonna go sending the legs, build out the frame, and then tomorrow we'll come back and put the slots in. We'll make the rabbits and all of that. So yeah, that's the plan. Now what you saw in that clip was me uh, running the rabbits uh, on the side of these uh, boards and the way they will go they will interlock so these two rabbits over here you see one is on one side one is the other and they will interlock with each other like this and that's the way the boards will go into the frames on the footboard and headboard and then also you saw me with the hand plane i put a very small chamfer on every one of the edges and that's just kind of like a you know design element so when the boards go together you have like a little v group groove i like that so these planks are ready to go into the frame but what we need to do first is to work on the legs and put our taper so then we can screw in the frame and drop in the panels so that's what i'm gonna do next now for the tapers remember i told you i want to start my frames eight inches from the bottom so i measure seven and a half inches just to give myself a little bit of room for error so i measure seven and a half inches from the bottom and then it will go two and a half inches wide over here so we'll cut off this part over here to make your tapers, I will do it, well, you can do it multiple ways. You can do it with the jigsaw, you can do it on the bench saw, you can do it on the table saw. I'll be doing it on the table saw. Now, on the table saw, you can use a taper jig, something like this from Microjig. I have this thing. I hate it. I don't use it. 
And instead, what I did is I made my own jig and I made this guy about a year ago when I first started woodworking. So the execution is not that great, but it works. What it is, it's just a piece of plywood and I ran a dovetail bit. I think it was a 3 8 and uh, you can see I did some terrible job. I have some blowout and stuff, but it works. I ran some straight lines like a grid and I put a runner. It's walnut, so it's hardwood. And this thing just fits into my table saw, um, just like this. And then the great thing about it, oh, I should move the camera so you can see. So now this guy just fits with the runner onto my table saw. And the great thing about it is I can use this micro jig uh, clamps and I'll be putting my wood over there and then just clamp it in. So let's do that. It's going to be a little bit awkward. I don't have a lot of support here. You see, I'm working on a job side. So, so let's see how we do this. I am going to going to do it more on this side. And I'm looking here at my mark and I lighten up with the edge of the plywood because I know that's where the blood is going to cut. And then where I made this mark in here, I make sure it's flat, flush with my jig. So just something like this, I'm going to clamp it in. All right, and I need another clamp. Make sure it's flush. When you use this clamp, make sure you don't push them too far. You don't want the metal to stick out this way and then hit your blade. So I am good on this mark. Now I'm a little bit too far. There you go. That is good. And then we're good here. You see the weight wants to tip it over. So I'll have to support it as I send it through. But first I got to start my dust collection. So I got to put this on the side for a second. And just like that, we cleaned, we cut a very clean, nice taper. Now I'm going to do this to all four legs. The tapers are done. And what I will do now is I will use a very small roundover bit just to soften the edges of the legs. So I'll put a very small roundover bit on, on the edges. The router bit left a very smooth edge, but I'm going to smoothen even more with a 220 grit. Just lightly go over this corner, just to make sure that everything feels really nice. Now here we are where we are so far. I have the two legs. I put the round over so now it has a nice and smooth edge, nice to the touch. And then this is our frame that we glued up the other day. And what I need to do now is we have the tapers. The tapers go on the inside. Always tapers goes on the inside of the furniture. I marked the eight inches where I wanted to start my frame. So it's going to be something like this. But uh, I don't want it to be flush with the bottom. So what I will do, I have this uh, 1 8 inch uh, plywood. I will be sticking this under my frame just to elevate it a little bit. That way it will leave a little bit 1 8 inch reveal on the other side. And I think that one will be the side that will be facing the mattress. And then on this side will be... It looks like a quarter inch or so reveal towards the outside of the mattress. I hope that makes sense. So I'll place these guys under the frame to elevate it. Make sure I'm on my eight inch mark on the leg. 
and then I will pre-drill, I will clamp this like this. I'll make sure it's really safe and secure, clamped really tightly. Then I'll be standing it up and I'll pre-drill through the um, groove that we made. I'll pre-drill and then screw it into the frame. I will add a bit of glue to just to make it a little bit more, you know, sturdy. So a little bit of glue, screw it in. I'll see you after I do that. Hey you guys, at this point, I think I'm ready to drop in the panels. I already pre-finished the panels just because that way, you know, I don't have to get into those, you know, nooks and crannies. I think it will be easier. Um, I even debated pre-finishing the frame, but then I decided not to, just because when I will be putting this top part of the frame to cap it, I'll probably have to have some squeeze out, I have to send it and stuff. So I decided not to pre-finish the frame, but we will drop in the panels. The panels are already done and finished and I'll probably have to trim one at the top when I get there. I did not measure yet to see how much. So let's see. I'm gonna take the cap off. Everything else is glued and screwed in place. You guys saw me, I put some uh, chamfers onto the legs on the bottom and the top just for, you know, to look prettier. And um, yeah, let's drop in some panels. There you go. One as in. All right, two panels. Three. Looking good. And now this one I will probably need to trim. So let's see. Yes, it looks like I need to trim a little bit. So I'll be marking that. All right, let's see. I'll be marking it. It's hard to see it with this pencil line. But just about there. I'll take it to the table saw, trim it, and I'll see you back. All right, our panel is cut to size, and now it's time to put some glue and cap it up. It's time to cap it and clamp it and cross our fingers, hope to work. There we go, one is in. This one needs a little bit of help. There we go. Nice tight joint. But there it is. We have a footboard and it's looking pretty good.
All right, it is getting late, but I just want to quickly check in with you guys and tell you I use the domino. You don't have to use a domino. You can use dowels. You can use pocket hole. You can use whatever you want. But I use um, domino because I have it. And those are the 10 inch by 10, 10 millimeter by 50 millimeter uh, dominoes. And I put two holes on each side of the leg. I offset them so I have a little bit of a reveal in the front. And this uh, four dominoes is gonna go in here and hold these legs together. And then in here we will have the frame just like we did with the footboard. So I'm gonna call it good for tonight. But tomorrow I'll come back and glue in these dominoes and I'll glue in the frame and the panels, they're already stained and they're waiting to be dropped in it. So we'll see you tomorrow. Our headboard and footboard is all assembled and it's time to stain. Now I already stained the floating panels that are on the headboard and the footboard because that is easier to do before you put it all together. But now I have to stain the rest of it. To stain this, I decided to go to with Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus 2C in color chocolate. Now, this finish is an excellent, excellent finish. It's very durable. It's a hard wax oil, but this color particularly, it's very challenging to work with. It is very blotchy. I have used it in my addition on my floors. I have it over oak. I have oak floors. And I did the, the same exact the Rubio monocoat and colored chocolate and it looks fantastic. But for some reason on this cherry, it seems to blotch a lot. You can kind of see it into the panels, but my daughter really loved this color. So we're going to go with this and finish it with this finish, even though it's going to have a little bit of blotchiness. And yes, I could have put some, um, wood conditioner underneath or maybe some shellac, but I did my research and Rubio recommends that you do not put anything under the, under the Rubio because it needs to um, bond with the cellulose into the wood, the raw cellulose. So that means you cannot put anything under Rubio monocoat. It has to be on pure wood. So I couldn't put anything to prevent the blotchiness. So this is what we're doing. I'm going to mix this. Um, we're gonna mix three parts of this finish with one part of the accelerator. You don't have to use an accelerator, but then it will take three to four weeks for it to cure. If you use the accelerator, it only takes one week to cure and it's 12 to 24 hours for it to be dry. So I'm going to mix this guys and then we'll start working on it. This finish is really easy to apply. You basically just put it on, rub it in, and then wipe it off. Rubbing it in. You do not want to have puddles because those will make more blotchiness. And then when you wipe it off, you want to completely wipe it off. You do not want any product left on the wood because that will just cure shiny and it's going to look really weird. So, all right, I think this board over here on the bottom is ready to be wiped off. So taking some paper towels and wipe with the grain. I'll take a new cloth for over here to just kind of feather that finish, pull it out of the edges and then feather it outwards so it blends in with the other finish I put on. And just like that we finished building a bed. Now this was so so fun to build and it was not free of mistakes. I made some mistakes along the way but um, it was fun and if I could do it all over again the one thing that I would do different is use a different finish. This finish even though the color is beautiful it does blotch a lot and that was kind of a problem but other than that it is super super sturdy. I'm very happy with the rail brackets that I chose to go with. They are so, so solid. I'll put them in the link in the description below if you want to use the same ones. 
Now, if you do decide to purchase the same uh, rail brackets, make sure you read the instructions, especially in the very bottom or they mentioned the locking pin. You do have to put in a locking pin. It is not intuitive, but once you read the instructions, it makes sense and that just makes it super, super solid. I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyla Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.